Good evening. <laughs> Sorry for the delay. My name is Bill Tan. How many of you have, it looks like a lot, of, how many have never seen or heard of me before? How many have never seen me or know of me at all? Okay. So the rest of you have? Yes. Wow. I'm infamous? <laughs> okay. I'm Bill Tan. I'm from San Diego. And I run a real estate club right next door. By the way, I wish to say congratulations for attending this one because this is a great club. She has a great club. I recommend this to people without any reservation whatsoever. And do you know how many groups there are in Southern California? And I can count on two fingers, maybe three, that I will recommend without any reservation. And Pasty Phoebe is one of it. And I've been running real estate clubs. Uh, I was part of San Diego for 25 years. I've been running LA RIA, Los Angeles RIA, which is over here next door and meets in San Gabriel. I think I'm six years on this one. So I've been doing this a little while. Started off in real estate. And then I started doing real estate in notes. And in the 90s, nobody really ever heard of notes before. So it was brand new ground. So I was doing that almost exclusively in just a little bit of real estate. And then in 1997, a terrible thing happened. All our notes paid off because all interest rates, and I know we have uh, lenders in here, interest rates went down. And from that point on, notes aren't quite, haven't been quite as good, the note business. And they also started making it more popular by teaching about it. So I've been teaching on real estate and notes for uh, 25 to 30 years. So I've been doing it for a little while. Uh, what she didn't say is that actually she recommended uh, one of the members here at Pasadena, Phoebe, to help. They, she had a house in Pasadena, Altadena, that she wanted to be able to buy herself. And I figured out a way for her to do it that nobody, trust me, nobody would have figured out. And got it all set up, and then she and her husband gave up. So, <laughs> had it all set up for them. Anyway, so tonight we're going to talk about notes. And notes are in our daily lives, and that's why I'm going to talk about it. So I gave this presentation a month ago. Was anybody here at that one? It was over in, at, uh, I wish to thank Robert Rufino, because he came up with the subject. I've been teaching for years. This is the one I hadn't done. So how to properly write a pri note. This disclaimer means what I'm about to tell you, don't believe a word of it, OK? <laughs> If you want any real answers, and I think I'm giving you real answers, but if you want the real answer, pay somebody who will then be responsible for it. Is that fair? Mm -hmm. Okay. This is my contact information. Feel free to contact me. My favorite subject is real estate and notes. I will have it at the end of the presentation, so if you, if you want to get it then, now or later. And you can get it any time because you're one of my annual members. So you don't need to do that. Oh, by the way, would you possibly like a copy of this presentation? Then you have to ask nicely. If you will email this email address and in the subject say, uh, Passing Phoebe presentation, I will send you a copy of it. it is that okay? Because I would want you, I will move. <laughs> I want you to listen to me rather than watch the screen. Okay? Yes? yes. Okay, phew. Okay, this is my group. We meet on the second Wednesday of every month. Next meeting is September 13th. We have a gentleman who runs the Bay Area Wealth Builders. His name is Michael Morangello. Very, very smart man. He does fix and flips, he does the note business, and he's going to tell us how he does deals and saves money, saves taxes. About tonight's presentation, beware and be very careful about private lending and private money. Here's why. The private lender has spent their life accruing this money. If the money is lost, it will have cost them a part of their life that they may not be able to get back. So this is particularly so with retirees. 
And do not lend money across state lines unless you absolutely know what you're doing. I have a very good friend who broke, well, I'm not sure he broke a law, but the SEC swooped in on the consideration that he might have broken a law. Swooped in, shut his doors, froze all his personal accounts on the off chance he may have broken a law. Now, as it come to pass, he never broke any laws, but he was forced, his company and himself personally forced into bankruptcy. I know this, why? Because I'm still part of that bankruptcy five and a half years later, and nothing has been done. So be very careful crossing state lines with money. What is a note? By the way, this is an interactive presentation. I like to walk around. Those of you who know me know that. I walk around and I'd like some feedback from you. So what is a note? Raise a hand, please. Promise, yes. Promise to pay. A promise to pay. Thank you very much. Yes. Do we use notes in our daily life? Yes. Raise your hand. What? What? Raise your hand. Uh, a Federal Reserve note. Hold that thought. Mortgage. A mortgage. Ah, ah. So what areas of our lives do we use notes? A mortgage on a house. It doesn't matter if it's a big house or a little house. Where else in our lives do we use mortgage? Notes. Car loans. Car loans. Dang it. She didn't even know this ahead of time. Where else might you use a note? Those are the two big ones. Where else might you use a note? Student loans, very good. What else? Credit card. credit card. Credit card is a note. A credit card is a note. You sign a contract. A note is a contract. How about this? Not too often, but are you aware that most boats are financed? Now, I've been a note investor, broker, and buyer. For a long time, I do not like car notes. I do not like boat notes. I do not like plane notes, airplane. I do not like train notes. What do these all have in common? What'd you say? Back here. No, son, you said it back here. They move. I live in San Diego. I do not want my collateral. If you ever thought about trying to collect money, try and collect it when they're in another country. One hour later, they're in another country from my house. Credit card, very good one. And this is a note. If you look at it carefully up here, it says Federal Reserve Note. Now, just as a, just throwing this out there, is this, by the way, this is called a bearer note, okay? Because whoever has it in their hand, that's who it's useful to, right? That's why some people try and steal them, because there's no name on it. Uh, shoot, draw a blank where I was going with that one. Oh, is this a secured note or an unsecured note? <laughs> I hear, I hear, ah, uh, and unsecured. Which one is it? <laughs> Almost. What backs up this, this note? <laughs> it's mostly, it's mostly, ah, yes. It used to be gold when we were on the gold standard. Now it is most, it is a great deal of faith. This. <laughs> I, I missed something there, I must have. This is backed up by the gross national product of the U.S. economy. That is the strength of this note. That's why this note has been the base of debt payments throughout the world, because we've had the most uh, stable economy in the world. So background notes, you need to know that because of where we're going. But this is transferable, is it not? 
Private notes are transferable too. These notes can be traded and sold. Do you believe me, yes or no? Yes, yes they can be. If I didn't have all this junk in my pocket from Chuck, I was going to pull out $2 bills and say, can I, could I sell $2 for $1? Yes. And I would just hold it. So imagine I'm holding $2. So I have $2 in my hand. Would, would anybody be willing to buy my $2 bills for $1? Yes. Would anybody be willing to buy my $2 for $1? See the $2 right there? I owe you one more. Ah. Take action, folks. Ah. That's an, that is an example. Take action. Listen to what's happening. Take action. I said, imagine I have $2 bills. I will sell them for $1. He believed me. Just like cash, private notes can be traded and sold. So what makes a note legal? What makes a note legal? By the way, this is a dry subject, and I'll do my best to lighten it up. Okay, what makes a note legal? It's a yes, it's a contract, Phil. What makes, come on, raise your hand, somebody. What makes a note legal? Yes, Gloria. Huh? Signature. A signature. Must have a signature. Yes, a note must have a signature. Whoever is borrowing the money, they must sign it. Great. What else is makes a note legal. Yes, terms. terms. You don't need to have terms in there. It would be nice. That doesn't, terms doesn't make it legal. Yes. Witness. What's your name? Frank. Frank? Brian. Brian. Hi, Brian. A witness. A witness. That'd be helpful. You don't need a witness for note an to make it legal. Huh? Offer an, an offer and acceptance. I'm going to say not really. Okay. Yes. An amount. An amount. That's right. How much is owed? What else should be to make it legal? Huh? You actually don't need a date. Don't need to be recorded. Recorded is the security. You record something because of this for the security. I'm sorry. No, that goes along with uh, recording. Yes. Parties? Huh? Parties involved? Parties involved would be yes. You, well, at least you need one party's name involved. Who? The borrower. The borrower. <coughs> you need the borrower uh, name. Good, good. Thank you. Product. Okay. Huh? Product or exchange? I'm sorry, I missed it. Product. Product? Or exchange? No. Well, it's getting a little long here. Let, let me help you. A promise to pay. I owe you. That's where we came up with the term. I owe you. Amount. Borrower signature. Date is a maybe. Don't always need a date. Okay, that's what makes a note legal. Now, you're going to use notes in every aspect of your life. So you need to understand which ones make it legal and which ones make them good. So we now know what's legal. Let's build upon that. What makes a note good? What makes a good note? Collateral. Collateral, Collateral is, let's say that's security. That has nothing to do with the note. Terms. I didn't see a hand, but I heard something. Terms, terms yes, terms. What do you mean by terms? You're the one who said it. Huh? <laughs> um, what the interest rate is. And how interest you rate. Very good. OK. Anything else go along with terms? Payments. Number of payments. Number of payments. OK. What else? Along with terms. Interest rate. The amount. That's right. <laughs> how much do you pay? Maturity. And when do you pay? Right? The credit, that goes more toward the security side. Very good. We need to know that. Interest rate. Interest rate. She did say that. 
maturity. When's this money due? Right? Anything else? Yes. For, right. Type of collateral. Very good. You want to put that in the note, if at all possible. The amortization rate? Well, the amortization. Time. So the amortization schedule? schedule? So you could attach that to the note? Well, it's going to affect you, the term. You could attach it to the note, by the way. Yeah. Stapler. Works really well. Right, but knowing what the amortization is. Knowing what the amortization is. So what does amortization mean? The number of years that you're going to, even though your note may be due in five years, if it's a 30 year amortization, and then you're going to have a balloon in five. But the amortization is going to know okay. payments are going to be. You're saying it, but you're not explaining what amortization is. I teach a financial calculator class, which, by the way, I am teaching one a week from Saturday. I just got a location. What's and the August 26th. August 26th. In Monrovia, where you were. Mm -hmm. You and Glenn. Did I sit with my yes, you did. And you sat right there. <laughs> yes. And her husband is very technical. Okay, so I got distracted there. Where was I? <laughs> what is amortization. Amortization truly means equal payments over a period of time. It comes from the Latin morte, which means to kill. So you're going to kill off a loan with equal payments. Now, partial amortization means you're going to amortize it, say, over a 30-year period, but you are going to say that the maturity date is only in five years or 10 years. If that's the case, what happens? What's that called? A balloon. A balloon. Now, do I have all your attention? This is very technical in the note business. Okay? Balloons are for clowns. <laughs> How many people do you think actually prepare themselves to pay off a balloon when it's due? One. In the whole room, one. If you have a 5, 7, 10, 15 year balloon, those will be the fastest 5, 7, 10, 15 years of your life. <laughs> so it must be in writing, particularly if it's in regards to real estate. It must be in writing. Notice how, if you can't see it too well, it's red, meaning it's very important. Okay? A legal note needs to be in writing. It, you should say who the people are involved are, the borrower and the lender. Wouldn't that be nice to know who's all involved? Yes. Terms, payments, how much, where do you send them? should always put in the, a note, any note, where the payments go to. I like to put in my notes, okay, where they directly deposited into my account from their account. And I put my bank account number in there for them. That is how we say mo better. <laughs> in, when I, in the 90s, I used to say love the note business because worst thing possible is when you cut your fingers opening up the envelope. Now, direct deposit, what's it also called? Uh, electronic funds transfer. Don't even have the cut fingers to worry about anymore. I strongly recommend that you use a third party servicing agent to deal with the payments in case there's any discrepancy. Always nice to have a third party. I use one up in mid California called, wow, Note Servicing Company. <laughs> Due date. So when is this note completely due? You also want to have in there when the payments are due. If it's monthly, quarterly, twice a year, once a year, what date is it due? The payment due. And when is that payment late? So that you can penalize them for being late I know in the back there you can't see it, it, it not, not tall enough, but so you can charge a late fee. You want to encourage people to pay on time. A late fee helps encourage them. What kind of note is this? As Jeff and I were talking about, is this amortized or does it have a balloon? 
or I had this note that I created. It was a seller finance up deal. They financed the, the sale of their property to me. My initial payments were incredibly low. It was wonderful. However, at a certain point, I had four very large payments. What do you think those four, those years of payments? They were annual payments and four of them. What do you think they coincided with? Taxes. Huh? Taxes. taxes. Good guess. And I, and I bought a note for people who had to pay taxes. Nope. And you have children? Is there a certain event in their life? College. And those four large payments were coincided with their first child entering college. Now, five years after that, there were another five, four large payments. What did that coincide with? <laughs> child number two. So I paid almost nothing, then four large payments, almost nothing, four large payments. So whenever you're negotiating with a human being, you can create a note that works for you. Whenever I'm talking to someone who's going to sell their property to me and finance the sale, I always ask them if they have children or if they have grandchildren. Especially, would you like to see your grandchildren go to college? Wouldn't you like to see their schooling paid for if in case you're no longer here. That's very powerful for some people. It's one way for you to get financing for a period of time that works for you. And financing works for you means you make a profit over that period of time. Enough to pay off when you have to pay, make the lump sum payments. Interest rate. Can anybody tell me what the California usury rate is? 10%. 10%. And who's that for? And not for the front row. They can't answer it. Because <laughs> we went over this out there in the, in the lounge. Huh? Private lenders. That's right. Because if a broker is involved, real estate agent, under a broker, real estate broker, a mortgage lender, licensed mortgage lender, or an attorney, they do not, they can put any, and this is what, this was a revelation, was it not? Exactly, you're going, really? They can put any interest rate on it at all. You could put 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, 100, whatever. As long as a licensed person is used. Now, California says that if you're not licensed, we're going to give you rules. And the rules are, if you're not licensed, it's 10%. And that includes points. Anybody tell what points are? It's a loan fee in order to get a... And, and each point is 1% of the loan amount. You got a question? So the question is, Hi. A loan out of state, but the, the company and everything is in the other state, you still have to do the 10% rule in California. If you are a lender in this state and you're lending money, I'm going to say that this is a wonderful question for an attorney. Okay, I can give you an answer. You want someone who you pay for that answer. Okay, I'd say that if you're lending from here to somebody out of state, it's whatever the state rules on the other state. Okay. Oops. What kind of interest is it? Is it simple interest? Compound interest, can somebody explain to me the difference between simple and compound? What's simple interest? Is it, is it too simple? Interest on declining balance. It's, say again? Interest on declining balance. It's the interest on the declining balance. It is actually the interest on the principal amount. Yes. Whatever the principal amount is, declining. that's the interest. And it can accumulate, however, you only pay interest on the principal amount the amount you owe. Compound means if you do not make a fully amortized payment, agreed upon payment, which pays all the interest for that period, then the part you did not pay gets added onto the balance. 
and then they find out how much your new payment is based upon the interest rate. So it's called compounding. I call it the eighth wonder of the world. It is why I got in the note business. It's why I was a lender. It is wonderful. If you are a borrower, it, 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 could, it could make or break deals. It truly can. Everyone's dated signature on the note. Everyone's signature with a date. And I would put their name printed underneath their signature line. You do not want there to be any questions involved, especially if you're doing the learning. Anybody in here interested in, in borrowing money? Good. This has got lots of good stuff for you. Anybody interested in lending money? Good. This has got lots of good stuff for you, too. Anybody interested in buying or selling notes? Ditto. So there's something for everybody, including people who want to buy real estate. Is it secured or not? You want to put that in the note. It has nothing to do with securing the note. You just want to say if it's secured and what do you want to put? What is it secured by and? Huh? First position. You want to know, well, yes, you definitely want first position versus second position. I have no problem buying second position notes, though. No. You want the ad address and what type of property it is. Legal description. Legal description. That's of the land. That's of the, the plot of land. Okay. But you definitely want the address, what type of building it is. I was offered this note. It was $100,000. It was between a CPA and his client. And the client needed cash. CPA couldn't pay it off, so he wanted to sell the note. Well, I did what's called my due diligence, which is your homework. Right? Come to find out that the CPA lived, his office was in this beautiful building that was a historical building. And the note was secured to the empty lot next to it. <laughs> so I had to point out to him that he'd have to, he had to go back to that CPA and, you know, because the lot wasn't worth $100,000. I also told me she got a new CPA, by the way. <laughs> Does it have a prepayment penalty? Do you want to have a prepayment penalty in a private note? No. Huh? I hear, I hear a conflicting answer. Depends on what side of the road you're on. Ah, David. Well, what side are you going to be on for this, this part? Huh? Land. You land. So do you want a prepayment penalty or not? Yes. Why do you want a prepayment penalty? If they pay before it, you'll get more money off their penalty. That doesn't really explain a heck of a lot. Did anybody understand that? OK. How about this? Do any of you do this thing called fix and flip? Show of hands. Fix and flip. OK. How long does it take for you to flip a property? Around, around months. Five months? Five months? Six. Three. six months. Three. Do I hear? Oh, no, OK. So <laughs> three to six months, right? Wouldn't you rather pay interest on three to six months, or would you rather do business with David who says, I want one year's of interest? <laughs> uh, which, one, which one's more better? It's a scientific term, more better. Which one's more better? Now, if you're a lender, his way's best. If you're a borrower, you just want it for the period of time that you need the money. So do we have any lenders in the audience? OK, I'm going to come back to you. Just remind me to come back to you guys. Is there a due on sale clause? Do you want that in there? Yeah? Everybody says yes? Yeah. I'm an investor. I don't want it. Why don't I want it? Why do you see want it? Why don't I? Cash flow. Cash flow, okay. That's right. I would have to pay it all off. What if, does anybody here need money? Anybody? Okay, we have lenders. Now, lenders, close your ears. Okay. I happen to know there are people, people, with literally millions of dollars who want to lend it. Would you like to know who they are? 
They are people who have self-directed IRAs and pensions. And guess what? Most of that money is not being invested at all. So what's their return? Zero. Zero. What would be a good interest rate for a loan for you, David? Eight. Eight, to ten percent? If you're borrowing money from somebody who's not making any money with their money, what would be a good return for them? Three or four percent. And would you want them to charge you points? No. no. So there's a vast untapped market. So you should, um, Karen Hall has meet and greets. Joint, go to them because they're people with money. Karen Hall, K A A R E N. She runs OC RIA and U Direct. U Direct's Administrator of Self Directed IRA Funds. So, do on sale clause. Why I don't want to do on sale clause is if I have great financing, especially from somebody who has a self directed IRA, wouldn't I talk to them and go about it? Look it. Okay, I've done this fix and flip. It took me four months. Okay, do you want me to give you all your money back now? What are they going to say? No, keep giving me money, right? So, okay, I have this other project. How would you feel about us taking this loan rather than me paying you off? Just move it over to this property and I'll keep making payments to you. Wouldn't that be better for me? Because I don't have to go out and find a new loan? Isn't it better for them? They don't have to go out and find a new place to place a loan? So, I don't want the due on sale clause. However, if I'm a lender, do I want it? Yes. yes. Why? He says to get paid. I'm going to get paid one way or the other. Bingo. That is the correct answer. You want to have the choice. Look it. Uh, let's say I don't want to get paid off. You've, so tell me about the new borrower and for me to allow this new borrower to come in, why don't you pay me some upfront money called points so I can make more money because I have the choice. Okay. As a borrower, you do not want that. As a lender, you do. In every single, every single institutional note there is, is this in there? Yes, there is, it's in there. You want a default acceleration. What's that mean? <coughs> Excuse me. <coughs> it means they're not paying. And since they're not paying, I want to be able, at my choice again, to say, hey, okay, I give up. I'm not going to chase you any longer. I want it all now. Right. And that's called acceleration. I want it to be my choice. Now, if I'm a borrower, do I want that? If you're borrowing money, it would be hard not to have that in there. <laughs> if you're borrowing money, it's hard to not get any of these things here. However, it depends on Supply and demand. Supply and demand. If it's somebody who's having trouble placing their money, then you're in the driver's seat if you have a good product, a good loan for them. If they have all kinds of requests for money, then they, what is it, what is the rule? The golden rule? He who has, he or she who has the money makes the rules. Okay, you want to, you want you want in the note, if you are lending, you want this. Who pays the legal costs in case of default, in case they stop making payments? Who's going to pay for the legal costs of forcing them to pay me? Borrower. Right? So you want that in there. If it's not in there, what happens? Each pays their own. Each pays their own. But if, if I'm a lender and they have not, I've lent them money and they have not paid me as agreed, don't I want them to pay for the legal costs of getting them, encouraging them to do so? 
What's Civil Code 2966 regarding balloon payments? Does anybody know? Any lenders in here? I know, I know there was lenders in here. Who are the lenders? What's, okay, I don't wanna, you've been answering too many questions. Annie, you're a lender. You're, you're a mortgage a loan, a loan officer, right? Do you know what 2966 is? Okay. And that's fair because most loan officers don't. You should know that, though. You need to know that. Anybody else is a lender? I saw a lender. You're a lender. Yeah, Bob? I don't know what that means. Ah, okay. I will promise you that m almost no private lender knows this. And that is the California law in regard to balloons. What's a balloon? It's a big payment. It's more than one monthly payment due at a, at a period of time. Usually it means everything that's due is due all at once. In California, you must make the person, the borrower, aware 90 days before, 90 days before the balloon is due. You must make them aware that the balloon is coming due, and it must be written. And it can't be more than 150 days before it's due. So somewhere between 90 and 150 days, you must let the borrower know that, hey, that big balloon payment we talked about a long time ago, it's coming due. And I'm, I'm ready to spend all the money. Are you ready to pay me? If you live here in California and you land in California, you want California law to be the rule in case there's any disagreements. There's nothing worse, Bob, than lending to somebody in another state and then have to chase them to that state where you may not know the foreclosure laws and the lending laws to chase them to that state to get your money back. Worst ones. How many were interested in the note business? Okay. And how many are interested in maybe lending across state lines? How does, okay. Let me, let me recommend against, in particular, two states in the union. Okay? Joyce is one of them, and New York is the other. Because it is currently, currently, down to three to five years to go through a foreclosure in Jersey and New York. That's down. It was five to seven. How do I know this? It's called scars and t-shirts. <laughs> I have a scar and t-shirt for every one of those. And some of them are painful. Because when you're in another state, these, these guys called attorneys are greedy. Notice I'm looking at one in particular. <laughs> Hey, they just want a mon money and they drag it out for as long as possible. Try paying for seven years to get foreclosed, to foreclose on a property. That's really, really, really expensive. Well, see, that's the thing. You have to know the rules of where you lend. I cannot note broker a Florida note because I am not a... Florida broker. I would be breaking the rules by brokering a note from the state of Florida. If I were to just buy it for myself, that'd be fine. But if I was to buy it from you and sell it to him, that would have broken the state laws doing so. So are you clear? If you're in California you, you know, and you know and understand California law, you want it to be here. Now, of all the states, if I'm going to foreclose, there's one state in particular I want to be in. Can, can you tell me what that is? Texas. Yeah. <laughs> Absolutely. Texas is the state. 21 days, and you're out. <laughs> now, I've been to Texas recently, actually, actually, and I don't particularly wish to live there or invest there. Uh, just a, just a, a fact, we were talking at at, uh, in the lounge there. If you're thinking about investing in Texas, Dallas, Houston, and Austin. Dallas, Houston, Austin. They have issued 130,000 permits in the past year. That's 10% of the nationwide permits. So if you're thinking about buying and flipping, you're going to have a lot of new housing to, 
to compete against. Oh, yes, Vanessa. What if the borrower is in California, but say the property is in another state? What if the borrower is in California and the property is in another state? Would you say then that the money crosses the state lines? You don't know? Would you think that if, even if the borrower was in California and the property was in Texas, that money somehow crossed state lines? Yes. Okay, that crossed state lines. Yes, Lewis. I'm a little confused here. Is that Great. Just a ma a making? No, hey, you, how do we learn in this world? Right. By making mistakes. Look at I got scars and t-shirts. I've learned from every, each and every one of them. I, and I also wrote them down. To remember. So one, one thing is lending the money to somebody that lives in Florida. That's, that's a note. That's a note. How about if I buy an existing note on a property in Florida? Do the same laws apply? The foreclosure lies, laws apply. Not necessarily that you lend, because you didn't lend money. You purchased, you acquired something. The lender that created that note, they had to follow Florida laws to do so. Now that you purchased the note, you're just now the owner of the note. The title's been transferred to you. Now you must follow the rules of Florida in order to foreclose. However, you really want them to pay, don't you? Sure, absolutely. Absolutely. So that, that's, that's not lending at that point, okay? Yes. Okay. Unless, okay? Unless. Now I'm confused again. Unless you, the, you borrowed money secured by that note on a property in Florida. That's called hypothecation. I threw it out there just to confuse the heck out of you. But I just want you, there, there's always a way. There's always a way. And I always find the ways. I love that. Make the note binding on heirs. I've been doing this for over 30 years, and in that time, I had one borrower pass away. Natural causes. Okay, I didn't send Guido. <laughs> and another one was involved in an automobile accident. Now, if the note is secured by real estate, okay, you can, if they don't make payments, then you can foreclose. Mm -hmm. However, if it was not secured by real estate, if you do not have in there that the note is binding upon heirs, heirs have no reason to pay you because it wasn't their debt. So you want that so it becomes part of a, a, um, a, a lien upon the estate. Yes? What would be an example of a note where you would require binding on heirs? What, what would you can we, can we do that one later? I'll be more than happy to answer. Can we do that one later? Write it down so that you ask me later. So I want to make sure I get through all of it. Make reference to the real estate or the collateral securing the note in the note. This, have you any, kill pill clause. It's not kill bill. It's pill, P-I-L-L. -L. What is a kill pill clause? It's a special note clause that institutions don't use. How's that? But as a note broker and investor, I put in. Anybody want to venture a guess? What's a kill pill? What does it sound like? It doesn't sound like a shot, no, Donna. Yeah, Brian. Huh? Good, good answer. It's not where both parties agree to end the note. Uh -uh. Yes. Let's say it's like some term that is in the clause that it allows the old note to just go away. And and that's what a lot of people think that it's possibly a clause in there that for under some circumstances the note just goes away. No, nope, that's not it. If I if I want to terminate the note, no. Yeah, Chuck. In case of death. In case of death. These are all great answers, not not the correct one. <laughs> Let me give you an example. 
Would you like an example? Sure. I've invested all around the country. At one point, I was invested in the Phoenix area. Not this latest run up, but the one a long time before that. And I would buy real estate throughout uh, the Valley of the Sun, they call it. And I would buy property and I would use seller financing, right? Because there was a time when people were having trouble selling their property. They were competing against other people. The way, only way they could do it was to offer financing, and I would buy it on terms in which I could rent the properties and still make a profit. So I got these people to finance the sale of this one property. And to tell you how long ago, it was $24,000, the note. Now, how many of you here have borrowed money? Of you that have borrowed money, was there ever a time when you got notified to make payments to somebody else? What happened? They sold the note? Is that possible? Oh yeah, we said up at the very beginning, they can be sold and traded. So that means they sold the note. Do you think they paid the balance on the note for that note? No. So one day, my wife and I get this, this note saying, hey, make further future payments to such and such. I go, why? So I called up the, pe the people I'd done with that I bought the note from and I'd been making payments to, and I said, what happened? They said, oh, we sold the note. Really? Why didn't you ask me if I wanted to buy the note? If ever you're making payments on a note, 100% of the time the people receiving the payments will think you have no money and will not ever be able to pay them off, even at a discount. So you must remind them, and I do this in any note I've ever made payments on since. I've come into a little bit of money. If you'd be willing to accept less than face value, let's talk. Put that in every payment you receive. You send out, I mean. Okay. So, how much did they sell that $24,000 note for? Raise your hand. Give me, give me. 12,000, 12, 10. 80%. 80%. So that would be um, 18,000. Okay? Anybody else? Depends what the interest rates were at the time. Huh? 15,000. Almost take one zero off. They sold it for $1,500. That has to happen once to you in your career and you will make sure it never happens again. Do you realize that I made, in five payments, I've got given their money back. Why do they sell that? Because, okay, why does anybody sell anything? No, they need money when? Now, and what are the reasons, be it a house, a boat, a car, a note, why do people sell things? What's the number one? Huh? That's number two. Divorce is number two. Medical is number one. Medical bills, number one. Number three are a new investment. Number four is just tired of collecting the money. No, they're tired of the monthly payments, they want it faster, they may have to chase the people to get the monthly payments. So all the reasons that people sell houses, they sell notes, they sell cars, they sell everything, all the same reasons, always. So if ever you're pursuing a niche, those are the type of people you want to pursue. Look, you got extra in, in, this, extra in this one. Would anyone like to see an example of a kill pill clause. Yes. After I get some water. <laughs> this is a kill pill clause. Maker has the right to match any bona fide written offer to purchase if notes should ever be offered for sale at a discount. Maker must be notified in writing, that's notice the sell note, it's a notice the sell note, 
30 days prior to selling the note, and maker shall have a period of 30 days to exercise the option to purchase the note. If you are a note investor, a note broker, note buyer, you will not buy this note. Why? Because you'll put all the time and effort into buying the note, and then I have 30 days to match it. And I might just go out and borrow the money somewhere else. So you'll have wasted all that time. No note investor will buy this note. That's why it's called a kill pill. If you get nothing else out of tonight, get this so nobody sells your note. So this if it's wording, a private note. This wording is superior to the first rider refusal verbiage. That could be. Okay, he says this is superior than the first rider refusal. This is more clear. Right. More better. More better. Okay. You haven't figured out in part of Hawaiian. Yeah. How's that uh, different from simply making it a non-sellable uh, note? Okay, Jim says, how's that versus making a non-sellable note? You can't make a note non-sellable. You can't do it. It's not legal. That does not make a little, that's not a legal note. You can put uh, stipulations into a note, or like you can a grant. You know, this, this money is to go toward this park, maintaining this park or something like that, or this land must be made into a park. You can do things like that. But you can't tell somebody they can't sell the note. It's a negotiable instrument. It, it is a choice in some of the forms that are out there. It's a choice in some of the forms. Now, okay, Jim, are those forms legal or not legal? Sounds like they're not. Sounds like they're not. Now, how would you find, how would that be proven? Somebody sues, which means you have to go through the courts. I'm a former deputy probation officer here in Los Angeles County for many years. I spent a great deal of time in courts because I dealt with juvenile delinquents. I was particularly uh, specialized in gangs. And I am currently, as of this moment, allergic to courts. <laughs> and I would do anything to stay out of court. However, if it was a $1,500 pay off on a $24,000 note, you'd find me there. Yeah. I'd be, I'd be, I'd be uh, protecting my position, tooth and nail. Here's an example of, I want you to see. I only have a couple because of time constraints. Here's an example. This is almost verbatim a note that was offered to me to buy. Bob Borrower promises to pay $100,000 with payments of $1,000 until paid. Signed, Bob Borrower. Is this a legal note? Uh, how many say no? How many say yes? How many aren't going to answer under any circumstances whatsoever? Okay. Come on. You either, what is it? Stand on here or stand over there? Come on, make a choice. Is it legal? Yes. Is it not legal? OK. For those who said it's not legal, it is legal. It's very much legal. OK. Now we learned what it's a legal note. We learned what makes a good note. What are the bad aspects of this note? Just some of them. No term. OK. What does that mean? No term. Brian, you said no term. Oh, Chip said it. Exactly. Chip, that is exactly why I did not buy this note. Exactly. The one reason more than any other. Didn't say when any payments were due. Didn't say when the note was due. Didn't have any late fees. Didn't have, and by the way, this didn't have any security. It was a personal note. By the way, in areas of the country, how many, how many have a mortgage? Okay, do you understand that mortgage is a generic term? This means yes, this means no. It's like Kleenex, right? Kleenex is a generic term now for tissue. 
right? Mortgage is a generic term. Here in the state of California, we use what? A note secured by a deed of trust. In other states, they use a note secured by a mortgage. In other states, they use a contract for deed. That's primarily in the middle part of the US, mid-USA. It's also known as a land contract. Just thought I'd throw that in. So this was a legal note. It didn't say, my biggest problem was, it didn't say when to get paid. Exactly. Chip hit it right on the head. Chip, I owe you a, a piece of candy. After. <laughs> Next time I see you. OK? Now, do you see where this is bad, right? This, see where this is bad? OK. Let me rephrase it. This is bad. Yes. OK. Whew. It doesn't have a promise to pay. It doesn't have the amount owed. It does have a promise to pay. It does have the amount owed. It does have the borrower signature. doesn't have a date. So here's one. I'm going to read it anyway. For value received, I, the undersigned, promise to pay to the order of the principal sum of dollars on maturity date with an interest rate, interest at the rate of some percent per year, interest payable beginning and continuing until maturity date, at which time all unpaid sums of principal and interest shall be due and payable. Should default be made in payment of the principal or interest, the whole sum of principal and interest shall, at the option of the holder of this note, become immediately due. That's a default acceleration. This note is subject to section 2966 of the California Civil Code, which provides that the holder of this note shall give written notice to the truster or his successor in interest of prescribed information at least 90 days and not more than 150 days before any balloon payment is due. Is this a good note? No. I saw, I, I saw you nodding yes. <laughs> and I heard no. a bellow of no. Ah. OK. Why is this? Why do you think this is a good note? Why do you think it's not? No? Nope. Josie. She nodded yes. Has a lot of good things in it, doesn't it? OK. So that makes it a good note. Why don't you think it's a good note? I don't see a frequency of payment. You don't see a frequency of payment? Well, it says uh, beginning and continuing until maturity date. It doesn't say if it's monthly, daily, monthly, annually, what? Very good. Star. OK, what else? Yes? It doesn't have a kill pill. That's my girl, Donna. <laughs> Donna's one of my students. <laughs> OK, what else does it not it have that it should have? Remember back what was good? I can't remember. Well, let's, say, let's go back to what makes a good, good note. A lot of things, right? OK, a good note. Is it in writing? OK, does it say borrower and lender? No. Does it say payments how much and it says payments and how much, but does it say where? No. no. Does it have a due date? Yes. Does it mention late fees? No. Does it say what kind of note it is? Yes. Balloon. Remember 2966? Does it say interest rate? Yes, it does. It's, you're supposed to fill in the interest rate. Does it say what kind of interest? No. It does not say what kind of interest. Does it have, ask for everyone's dated signatures on it? Everybody's. No, because it doesn't mention all parties. Does it say if it's secured or not? No. Does it say a prepayment penalty? No. Does it have a due on sale clause written into it? No. Does it have a default acceleration? Yes, you were listening. Does it say who pays legal costs? No. It mentions the balloon payment. Does it say California law? No. Does it say make no binding on heirs? No. <laughs> so make reference to the collateral? No. Doesn't have a kill pill clause. You can get this form off every single title company. They give it away for free. Ah, he says it's not worth it. He's exactly right. 
Now, could you make this note work for you? This means yes, folks. Say yes. Yes, you can. How would you make it? You would add an addendum to the note. And in the addendum, you would have all the items that make a good note and put that in there. If you were to buy a note in the future and, those no and not all aspects were in there, what can you do? Before you buy it, you request a note modification, which requires an agreement on the borrower's part, which isn't easy. Not easy at all. I did say it was draw people leaving. OK, let's talk about security. We had people talking about security earlier. What makes a note safe? It's real important. Collateral, right? Now, what is really important if you're going to be a lender? What, who is the ultimate payer on a note? If you're a lender, who's the ultimate payer on a note? Real estate note. Sorry. I just gave it away. Wrong. Who is the ultimate payer on a real estate note? The real estate is the ultimate payer, right? Because if the borrower doesn't pay, you have to what? Foreclose and go after the security, the real estate. So in order to be a lender, you must first know and understand the value of property. Don't make a loan if you don't know the value of the collateral. Be absolutely certain you know the value of the collateral and in which direction the market is heading wherever you're lending the money. Before you lend, that's called doing your homework, due diligence. In California, you want to make sure the trust deed is recorded. If you're a lender, if you're in another state, it's what? A mortgage or a land contract or contract for deed. Very good. You want to make sure, if you're lending, that there's good title. If you're, or if you're buying a note. Or if you're buying a note. All these things you want to make certain of when you're buying a note. Make sure that the owner has clear title. Wouldn't it be interesting to try and foreclose on a property when the, the payer on the note doesn't have clear title? That is a nightmare. How do I know? Use an escrow company. An escrow company is a neutral third party to make sure that what both parties said is going to happen, happens. They're worth every penny. Title and escrow, worth every penny. You must, and who said it earlier, check the borrower's credit. Make sure that they're credit worthy, that they have a history of paying their obligations on time. By the way, uh, I make a borrower go out and get their own credit report and give it to me. No? Oh, yes, I do. Oh, yeah. Golden rule, my rule. If you want to borrow money from me, you have to go out and get your own credit report. I'll tell you what report I want. You go out, pay for it, and give it to me. Yeah, Lawrence. Prospective borrower. Well, the prospective borrower, but are you accepting it directly from them, or are you? Yes. Well, I mean, if they send it to you in, I don't know, some kind of PDF format, they could alter that. True, they could. So I'm just wondering, because I've heard, I've heard different things, and um, you know. It used to be a time when you couldn't alter PDFs, by the way. <laughs> right. And then, I would ask for the original. Okay. Because I know you have. I know you have. You know, if somebody really intends to commit fraud, you ha there's so many things you have to do to protect yourself. Most people, especially new lenders, they, they, they don't do it. That's why you should always work with somebody first. Yeah. David, hang on. I'm running out of time, so let me finish this. Okay, check the borrower's credit. You want to make, hey, this is the one thing right here. Note buyers, 
New lenders, they never do. Never check to see if the property tax has been paid. They don't do it. How do you check that? Well, if you use an escrow, you tell the escrow to make sure it's done. Yes, you can. You can check that by most title companies. It's public record. And so if you get the information on a property, usually with a, through a property profile, it has where the property tax has been paid or not. Insurance. Get insurance. You want to make sure that the property has title insurance. You want to make sure that if you're a lender that you get lender's insurance and you want to make absolutely positive that the payer, the owner of the property has hazard insurance on the property and you want to make absolutely certain that the insurance company knows that you are added as an additional insured. I'm sorry? The reason you make certain that the insurance company has you as an additional insured, you do not want that property to be burned down and the insurance company pay the owner of the property and then you have to chase the owner of the property for that money. Rather, if they know you're an additional insured, they pay you what you're owed and they give the le what's left to the owner. You do not want to chase somebody whose house burned down because they may just up and leave town. They may decide not to rebuild. With your money. How do I know this? <laughs> what is the most important element of a good note? What is the absolute most important element of a good note? And this is a trick question because it hasn't been covered. How many lenders do we have in here? You must absolutely know this before you make a loan. You must know this if you make a loan. It's not your money, so don't worry about it. <laughs> huh? The absolute most important element of a good note is protective equity. What is protective equity? Can somebody try louder? You're loaning less than what the value of the property is? You're loaning less than what? OK. Protective equity is the value of a property minus any loans that are, liens that are against it. OK? What is the typical protective equity from a conventional lender? How much do conventional lenders typically lend? 80%. So what's the protective equity? Why do you think, is that an arbitrary number? Why do you think they chose that? No, no. It's because they know if they have to foreclose that they can go through the foreclosure process, sell the property, and they'll get their money back plus any cost they've got into it. Now, why, why do lenders sometimes make these 3% down loans instead of 20%? Government assistance? What? Insured. They're insured. That's right. They're insured by? The government. The government. It's the only reason why they make those loans. They're insured. Because those are high-risk loans. Protective equity is the most important, period. If you're buying a note, if you're making a loan. Let's review what makes a good note. What's the most important? <laughs> Great. You guys are really getting it. Oh, it's already there. A, a legal note, plus it must be in writing, must tell who the borrower and lender is, what the payments are, how much and where, use a servicer when at all possible, has the due date, includes late fees, how much, what kind of a note is it, what's the interest rate, understanding what usury is, what kind of interest is it, you want to, if you're making payments you want simple interest, you want everyone's dated signatures on the bottom of the note, you want to see if it's secured or not, you want to have a prepayment penalty if you're a lender, you don't want it if you're a borrower. You want a due on sale clause if you're a lender, you don't want it if you're a borrower. You want a default acceleration if you're a lender, you don't want it if you're a borrower. You want to say who pays legal costs if you're the lender in case of default. You want to have in there about California Civil Code 2966 if it includes a balloon payment. You want California law to preside over any differences. You want to make the loan binding on heirs. You want to make reference to the note, collateral, securing the note, 
and you want to kill pill clause. That <laughs> is how you should write a private note. You are better prepared to do that now. You don't know everything. You know really everything you essentially need to know to do a private note. And that's all I can give you tonight. Thanks. Lewis, you had a question that I could not answer at the time. I didn't write it down and I forgot. <coughs> okay. Yeah. Oh, I do have one. So you said we would be able to get a copy of this? Yes, you'll be able to copy how? Email me. Email me at? Bill at BillTanInvestments.com. David. I'm not following you right now, David. So you know, Billy knows, like, you get a non-performing note to Okay, so right now in the part of the cycle, we have non-performing notes. Right. Right. Or now, this is part of the real estate cycle right now, non-performing notes. Right. There are still about 5 million non-performing default notes available throughout the country. That doesn't mean they're good, but they're available. So, um, the whole, uh, could you explain the Oh, by the way, before, um, I run a club. If you would like to attend our meeting, the first one's on me, if you, if you bring this flyer. It's up here. So before you leave, get one. OK, that was my commercial. Uh, just just serious commercial, wasn't it? Oh, and I'm teaching a class a week from Saturday. OK, so what he's saying is, right now, there are a tremendous number of default and delinquent notes throughout the country. If you're going to buy the note from either a bank, but probably banks have now sold them to asset managers, okay? And be very careful when you do business, by the way, folks, with these guys. And I'll, and I'll tell you one thing you really need to know if you're going to buy a note, okay? Especially if you're buying it from asset manager. Use an escrow company, okay? Use an escrow company, and use an escrow company because these asset managers are wonderful about selling you the note at less than face value. They're really, what is that word she used at the very beginning of the day we're not supposed to use? <laughs> They're really bad about giving you the paperwork afterward. So that you, if you wanted to foreclose, if you wanted to make modifications, you can't because you don't have the paperwork. A friend of mine who's a big note guy right now, uh, Gerald, He's been, the company's in Newport Beach, and three years later, he still hasn't got the paperwork for a note he bought from them. I'm not going to say who it is. Yes? What, what, where, where's a good source to buy these non performing notes? Okay, well, that's not tonight's subject. However, there are small banks, small regional banks. If, some, if there's a property in foreclosure, and the lending institution is from another state? Let them know. I'm calling about the loan that you have in default on 123 Main Street in Pasadena, California. And I'm interested in acquiring it. Now, you're going to receive a runaround, tremendous runaround. However, if it's usually toward the end of a quarter, end of a month, or the end of a fiscal year, you, you get a lot more traction then. Especially when somebody's job's on the line. <laughs> Amazing how that works. <laughs> so uh, that's not the subject of today, but uh, there are companies locally that are asset managers that sell the notes. Uh, I can refer you to other people more like that. Uh, if you're, uh, what's Gerald's last name? Can't think of it right now. Lemoyne. Gerald Lemoyne, the Lemoyne Group. He's a friend of mine. His, his group meets on, they meet on a really stupid day. His group meets on the second Wednesday. But however, because of my group, he's going to change it. <laughs> he's going to change the date. How does he spell it? L-E-M-O-I-N-E. -E. First name, Gerald. Any other questions? Yeah, Lawrence. So on the slides, you had mentioned about the uh, personal credit, like the credit of the borrower. But I, some of the things I've read is like the borrower credit isn't as important if there's no, because like you said, the ultimate pay on that. Well, are you? If you're buying the note to get the real estate, 
you still want to know the value of the real estate and you still need to know the foreclosure laws wherever you bought it but you don't want to buy pay two thousand dollars for a note on properties in ohio where the property's been vacant for five years they have those things called weather and you know it's falling apart and you're california you have a bullseye on your chest because california investors are suckers because you know everything's cheap to them that's what everybody in this country believes california investors are suckers just I can't say it because I have family in Bakersfield. Okay. <laughs> so, if you're, so if you're looking at, let's say, a situation where you find... Uh, wait, okay, wait. In this instance you're talking about, you know they're not making payments already. So you, you don't care about the credit. You know they're not making payments. What you are interested in is the protective equity. Uh, right, yeah. So okay. in that case, if, the, if you're completely fine with the property, the credit is great, would you still lend in that case? Like you love the property? One, I would never lend in that case ever never lend in that case because you're loaning to own and some states have a real problem with that now if you bought the note and foreclose it's a different story but loan to own they, they real states really don't like that you can buy a note to own it though any other questions I, I come on 915 anyway, 915 anyway okay